What's up, good people? Come on in the room. I'm excited. Yeah, there we go. Hey, hey, what's up, Crystal? How are you? Good to see you all in the place. I'm excited. Uh, let's see, pop out. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I had a couple of things open behind me. Um, give me one second. Let me get this out the way. I hope you guys are having a pretty awesome day so far. I look forward to sharing this with you guys. I believe we got something special for you all tonight. Um, let me turn this on mute so I can get the comments going. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Give me the thumbs up if you can hear me. I want to make sure I can be heard. <laughs> thumbs up if you can hear me. Guys are having a pretty awesome day so far. Yeah. Sequence Baker is in the Dr. Sequence Baker's in the building. Hey Sequence, how are you? Oh, you guys can hear me great, great, great. What's up, Taurus? I hope you're doing well. I'm excited about having Taurus uh, jump on in this thing with me in a couple seconds. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be literally something to talk about, but I'm so glad you guys are jumping in with me. Um, really quickly, if you guys don't mind, do me a quick favor and just um, share with your followers, hit the share button. I wanna talk about something very, very briefly, but I do believe it's going to be something that literally blesses you and keeps calm, helps push you on to your next place, to your next level in destiny. So while you guys are sharing this thing for people and getting them on and involved, matter of fact, hold on Taurus, I'm gonna see if I can add you in now. Um, while you guys are doing that, man, I'm, I am really excited about what's going on here this coming week. Uh, um, thank you, Secrets the Beard is indeed on uh, Fleek Fleek. <laughs> but um, this week I'm hosting my very first conference. It's going to be called the King's Business Conference. And I promise you all, I am excited about that I am finally doing something for me that I have always done for other people. It's been an amazing journey uh, just to kind of get some things going and build some things for other people. But man, I'm so excited honored and excited and elated to be able to do it finally for myself and that's what this will this weekend will be about um empowerment education impartation all that good stuff that we say that we need we really do need it one thing that i know for a fact is that uh, god has called a lot of us to do some amazing things and create some amazing things here in the earth and a lot of times we just need the strategy and insight from those who are already doing it so that we're able to do it and to do it well so I'm excited about that. I'm going to get Taurus in here on really quickly. And once we get Taurus in, we're gonna jump on in. So while I'm doing that, man, you gotta share with your followers. Um, Cause I would love for them to be able to be blessed by what we're about to be blessed by today as well. Um, I do know one thing for fact is that uh, we're about to learn. One thing that I do know for sure is that each and every one of us at some point has had a dream that we put down or a dream that we did not work through the way that we should have. And that right there is one of the most damaging things you could ever do for you, for yourself, or for anyone else is to legitimately not do what it is you feel called and positioned and pressed to do here in the earth, man. It, it leaves you with a permanent void that you're not really sure how you can feel. You find yourself doing things and trying to find your way around different things. It's like all of it is because you didn't really know what to do with what you had. And because of that, because you didn't know what to do with what you had, it kind of made, kind of put you at a place where you were at a standstill, um, where you didn't really understand what to, how to get there, what's that place, how to get to that place, how to make that place a reality and not just something you talk about or not just something that you hear, hear shared or whatever. So we're gonna dive into that in just a quick second. I'm gonna bring Taurus on really quick. Taurus, check your Facebook message. I just sent you a link. Um, so you can hop on in here with me, but while Taurus is getting ready to jump on in, I do want you guys to hear this. Um, look, I can go ahead and start realistically. So while I put my dream down, it may sound kind of interesting. You're like, what is this about? Well, this is about what exactly what it sounds. Why did you put your dream down? Like, think about all the dreams that you had, whether you were a child, the dreams you had as a uh, preteen the dreams you had as a teenager, the dreams you had, uh, shoot, while you were in college, all these dreams that you had at some point, another, most of them, about 98% of them, if I, if I had to guesstimate a percentage, 98% of those dreams you never did anything with. And my question to you is simple, why? Why did you 
not do anything with all of those dreams that you have had in your lifetime and your lifespan? Why did you never do anything with them? Why? That's a, that's a place where I know that I've been, there's a place, but that's also a place that I'm determined not to be ever again, where I'm wondering, why did I, why did I put my dream down? Why have I not moved forward to where I want to be and what I want to do? And so I'm here to kind of talk to you guys through that. So one of the things that I know reason why we put our dreams down is because we are actually distracted and not very focused on this thing that we call um, life. Uh, many of us have had dreams that we don't think or we don't even realize that these dreams actually can manifest in our life. They can be here. You can legitimately live out your dreams. You can literally walk, talk, and have the life that you believe, that you dreamed about. Many of our dreams die. And when I, I talk to people all the time about different things they have in their head, and it, it always baffles me that people say, man, I've been having this idea since I was 16. Man, I've been having this idea 10 plus years. Man, I've been having this idea 15, 20 years. And I'm thinking in my head, how did you get to this point where your dreams and visions and ideas of 10 to 15 years never really came up, never really came to pass? You didn't do anything with them. And I'm like, oh my God, man, that is almost kind of discouraging and damaging to know that there's a chance that you can have a life filled with the million dollar ideas, a life filled with dreams that could literally change the trajectory of your life all the way around. And because you had a little fear in your heart, you never moved on them, your life stays at this level right here. It's like, and then what we'll do is we'll get on social media and we'll see people who live their life here and we'll be envious of them. It's like, man, they're living their life here. How do I get my life? And it's like, your life could be there too if you just moved on what it is that you placed in, that was placed in your mind and your heart. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a few people jump in and out today and they're just gonna share why they let their dreams die, why they did not move, why they put their dreams down. I'll be the first one to tell you, I've put my dreams down quite a few times. Most of the dreams that I put down were because I decided to put my dream down to take care of everybody else's dream. I know a lot of us can be there. We, a lot of us can agree that that's the place that we are, that the place, that's the place where we've been, but that's not the place we're supposed to reside. You can do your dream. You can do your thing. You can do your vision in the middle of helping someone else do their God-given thing as well. Like you, you have enough time. You have absolutely enough time for you to do your dream and to do everybody else's, the, the ones that you've been assigned to, you have enough time. You have enough time. And that's just one of the reasons I've put my dreams down. But I want you guys to hear from somebody else. I'm gonna bring in Taurus really quickly. Taurus is somebody that's, man, he's amazing. Taurus is somebody who's brilliant in thought process, brilliant in logic, brilliant when it comes to just kind of being submitted to God. And Taurus also is one of those people who, um, who has allowed himself to really stick out and live out his dreams. So Taurus, I want you to kind of come on in here, brother. I know I see you on the screen over there. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you so we can at least hear you. Cause Taurus, we wanna hear why you put your dream down and what you're doing now to ensure that you never put your dreams down again. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, man, I can hear you. Can you see me? You can't see you just yet, but I'm pretty sure it'll pop on in just a second. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and start talking. Uh, thank you first for the opportunity to share why I put my dream down. Uh, the, the main reason that I put my dream down was because my dream was just too big. I felt like that I was insecure, insufficient. I was too dysfunctional to carry the dream that, that I had, to carry what the, the, the thing that God had put on the inside of me. I even begin to try to identify, you know, is this a dream or is this just a fantasy I have? And one way that I was able to identify my dream was that my dream was so big that it helped other people. Proverbs says, um, a hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is as a tree of life. When you literally walk in your dream and walk in what God put on the inside of you to do, it literally becomes a tree of life for a community. Think about what a tree is for an ecosystem. It's shelter for animals, it's building material, it's food, it's, it's shade for the heat. When your dream is, when you fully walk into the dream that God put on the inside of you, you literally become something for your community. So I put my dream down because it was too big. 
And once I picked it back up, I started realizing the blessing that the dream that God put on the inside of me was for the other people, the tree of life that it was for other people. And um, it pushed me to keep producing more and more trees, more and more dreams. So, yeah, man, that's so why I put my dream. That's crazy, man. You said something that was so profound, man. I'm going to you, you said you said my dream, your dream. You thought that you were too big and your dreams were too big and you thought that you were too dysfunctional. Man, that was so probable because I know that I've been there as well myself where my dreams actually scared me. I mean, we hear people say stuff like all the time. Yeah. Say dreams just scare you. But what happens when your dream really does scare you? You're like, oh my God, what is this that I'm supposed to be doing? How can I do this? I don't have the resources. I don't have the education. I don't have the certificate. I don't have the degree. But man, when you said I'm too dysfunctional for my dream, Taurus, man, that's heavy. Oh, right. Man. We are in that headspace where we legit feel we are too dysfunctional for our dreams. Yeah. Yeah. The dream is bigger than and, and really when you know when that's the feeling that you will have when it's a dream for God from God. When you really have a legit dream from God that was put on the inside of you, you'll see it at six years old. You'll see it at. 10 years old, you'll see it at 16 years old and you look at your current space and you're just like, this is just too big. I'll just, I'll go do this. I'll go to, I'll get my business degree instead of doing what you really want to do because your, your, your dream is just too big. Yeah. Yeah. That, and it's so crazy. Go ahead. T. Go ahead. No, go ahead, man. You got it. I was, just saying, I was saying it's so crazy that when you really start walking into your dream, you get focus. You get focus like you've never had before. When you're, when you're, op there's a difference between a dream and a fantasy. Fantasy is always rooted in other people's success. It's always birthed from other people's success. Fantasy is so closely tied with envy. You see other people flourishing and other people being what they're supposed to be. And you begin to fantasize about how you could be in that place. But when you're really dreaming the dream of the Lord and you're really dreaming, that dream will protect you through every stage of life. It'll focus you. Think about Joseph. Joseph had a dream as a child that he would be ruling and his family would bow to him. That dream protected him through the pit. That dream protected him through the through Potiphar's house. That th that dream protected him through prison until it fulfilled itself in its time. So keep your dreams going. My dream was to um, was to teach and train and lead people um, and to equip people into being the best versions of themselves for the kingdom of God. And I felt like it was too big because I was a mess. And walking to it and walking into it and being being surrounded by the right support system and the right people who believed in my dream who knew and pushed my dream i've now authored um two books that i'm very proud of that are doing surprisingly well you know bigger than what i thought and um helping a lot of people man let's let's stay right there man you said something that um that that word mess man um we have you know, in a day and age where people and we are messy beyond measure, uh, whether and like we mask it as petty. And one thing that I've realized and I've had to remind myself is that sometimes when you think about how things grow, especially when it comes to irrigation and plants and different things like that, mess is included in their growth process. But what a lot of times what we've done, we've allowed so much mess to be on us as the seed that we drowned out the seed. And now we really believe that all we are is mess. Yeah. It, it takes a little mess to get you to where you're supposed to be. But we have allowed so much mess to come upon us that that's all we think that we are is mess. We're bigger than that. But man, when you said that these dreams, like we, it, dreams and fantasies, when we think about how many dreams that we've let die off, we have really just entered into a level of fantasy. Think mm -hmm. about like all those dreams that you did not operate on, like somebody died waiting on that. Yes. Every dream that you mismanaged, every dream that you weren't a good steward of, somebody died waiting on that. We are losing people every day whose life quality could have been enhanced and elongated if yes. 
step into who we are, step into what we're supposed to do. Because one thing that I've learned and I've realized uh, through trial and error and also through maturity is that when you really understand that once you get past fear, nothing, none of this, none of what, none of what you're called to do, none of what you feel like you should be doing is really about you. It's about everybody else. It changes your outlook on it. It changes your perspective. It's like, how dare I? Like, how could right. I? Now, so many years on vision birthers, and in less than two years, I have helped 50 plus people birth out a successful vision. And I'm looking at people like, y'all making a lot of money over there. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Does. Like, they've changed everything for their entire family. But man, I know how it feels to be like, man, I'm, 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 I'm too dysfunctional for this degree of, of divinity and, and for this degree of success. I'm too dysfunctional. But I, mean, I personally believe that as messed up as each and every one of us is, I think that mess was necessary for us to get ready to call and to carry what we're supposed to carry. That's so true. That's so true. You know, that's what the scripture says, you know, that a dream fulfilled is literally a tree of life. A tree it's a tree of a tree of life. Like we tree see our dreams. Many functions. Right. Like you got you can go get a fruitful tree. You can stand in the shade and cool off from a tree. It brings forth a breeze. Like you can build a house because of a tree, man. Tree are man, that's so profound. Like how much of a, a impact we are when we allow our dreams to really become those trees. We're multifaceted. We are multidimensional beyond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Go ahead. You, you're preaching. Go ahead. No, no. I'm. I, I, that's it. You know, yeah, when you wow. just if you keep that focus, that when you walk in your dream, you become a tree of life to other a tree of life to other people. It'll change your passion about it. It'll change your drive and your energy. And man, that, that, I'm I'm so glad you shared that scripture, dude. Like that, I'm I'm glad you shared that, and I pray you guys that are on Facebook are really catching that. Like we really are supposed to be trees of life. When you think about the many different usages of trees, that really showed me that. And I was a, only a few of them I could think of off back. Think about how many places that that trees are actually going. I think even more about trees. It's paper. We're writing on paper. We're writing visions on paper. Our children are learning because of paper. It's a pencil. Like trees, really. I think I want to be a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you are a tree. In 28 years, I finally found my call. My calling is to be a tree. And I encourage all of you guys yeah. to be this charge with us in the comments. Put down there, I'm going to be a tree of life. I'm going to be a tree of life. Put that in front of you. Put that before you. I'm going to be a tree of life because, man, there are so many people who are not catching the fresh winds of life because we aren't the trees that we're supposed to be. Or Yeah. Or twigs we're still trying to grow out of the ground we are supposed to be literally bringing forth the fresh wind of life for people's future for their destiny for their purpose but because we haven't allowed ourselves to grow into the tree the strong the sturdy the planted tree that we are people are not catching wind of their future they are not catching wind mm -hmm. of their purpose they're not catching <laughs> wind of that next level of life they're not catching wind of anything because we are not being the trees that we are designed to be. Like each and every one of us has a function. Each and every one of us has something that we're supposed to do, but each and every one of us is supposed to be a tree, a tree of life, <laughs> a tree of life. And man, tree, yeah. tree I'm sorry, go ahead, Torres. Go ahead, man. No, I'm, no, you're, you've hit it. You got it. <laughs> you're supposed like, to be a tree of life. Man, I thank you so much for sharing that scripture, man, a tree. But one thing about, man, that tree, they're so deeply rooted, man. They're so sturdy. They're so, man, like, I think that we all need to study the life of trees now to really get a full understanding of who we are and where we are, man. We should be really walking into this treeness. <laughs> Instead of blowing yeah. trees, we be trees. <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> I think I can say that. I'm going to go on record and say I can say that. <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to be a tree of life. You're right. We're going to put down smoking trees and blowing trees, and we're going to be the tree that we need. <laughs> <laughs> become we a tree. We have to become the tree that we smoked, <laughs> that we stood up under, that we propped our lives. We got to become that tree, man. There are so many people who are hurting and suffering because of our inability to move forward and to progress into what God has called and designed us to be. I think if we looked at, if we looked at our assignments from God not as options, but as requirements to get into heaven, I think it would really change the way we did things. 
I know there are plenty of stuff that I haven't done. Yes. Assignments of God were optional. Your God-given assignments are not optional. Ask me how I know. Because if, if I could throw away or switch out some of these God-given assignments that I have right before me in my current stage of life, Lord, I'm not going to cry. I would turn those in too. But man, our God-given assignments are not optional. Talk, talk about that, Torch. Talk about that, man. When you really, I mean, the, the, the God-given assignments is really what protects you through the woes of life. You know, if you, it's so, it's so much easier to, tr to follow fantasies. It's so much easier to follow fantasies. Fantasies are so much easier to obtain, but they're rooted in flesh. Fantasies are always rooted in flesh. But when you really start uh, uh, taking God-given assignment seriously, you'll start obtaining a strength like no other. Like Joseph was able to ward off Potiphar's wife's attack on him because he kept focus on his dream. His dream literally allowed him to protect his family from famine. Not only his family, but a nation was protected from famine because through every pit, prison, and 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 scandal, he was able to hold on to his dream. You know, and when we take our God-given assignment seriously, then we're protected through every Every, every way of life. When we when we step outside of that God-given assignment, there's no protection for us. George, but we're George, right there, dude. When we like a lot of us are seeking protection of God and looking for God to protect us when we're not where He wants, where He designed His protection to be. The protection mm -mm. we're looking for, the influence we're looking for, the resources we're looking for are actually locked up in a place that we refuse to walk to. Yeah. Yeah. And we we allow we allow the uh, we I taught a class on tonight about how we allow jealousy, the jealousy of other people and what other people are doing and how. How the, and, and how they are doing it so well, we've allowed that to. We've allowed that to literally stifle us from moving into purpose out of fear. Maybe I won't be as great as them, or maybe I won't be as effective as them. But really, when you hone in on your God-given assignment and God-given abilities, you really, you really gain a strength that you can you can't get anywhere else. And I'm glad you brought that up, man, because that's another reason a lot of us put our um, our dreams down is because of the the success of others. We are jealous of the success of others that we see when they said, you know what, I'm not gonna put my um I'm not gonna put my dream down this time. I'm not gonna put my dream down again. I'm gonna work this thing like I have to because I have no other choice. Like we have um we have allowed, we have really, 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 really sat back and let people go get the success that was supposed to be promised to us. We have given it away. I know there are times where I've seen people who turned and did things, and I'm like, man, I should have been doing that. Or that was what God told me to do. But because we dragged our feet in disobedience, or we told God flat out, no, I'm not doing that, that's when we like we look up and it's like, oh, my God, man, somebody else is doing this. Somebody else is walking in this. Somebody else is hosting this. Somebody else just wrote this. And now everybody's buying from somebody else because we chose not to be obedient. That's and that's the story of Saul. Saul was anointed to be king. He was anointed to be king. He was gifted by God to be king. But when he stepped out of his God-given assignment, he stepped when he stepped out of his God-given assignment and and stepped out of obedience to the to the word that God gave him, he literally lost his gifting. Lost and that's that speaks so so strong to what we have to be. When we are outside of God's assignment, because God never anoints us for ourselves. He gives us anointings and assignments for people. David said in Chronicle, First Chronicles, he said that I realize God has anointed me as king over Israel for the sake of the people. When we lose the sight of and we focus in on our deficiencies and our problems and our mess and we lose sight of people, we literally are step are literally um stepping out of agreement with the anointing that God assigned to us. And like how how crazy are we to be praying and fasting and believing God for a measure of things? And it's like, oh man, God, we never allowed you to really be what we needed you to be. Like we we robbed God the opportunity mm -mm. to be God 
because we are consistently putting our hands into everything that God is trying to do. God is like, hey, I'm working. And in the midst of me working, you keep putting your hands in this stuff and you have messed up the perfect plan, the perfect layout, the perfect thing that I had set up before you got here. You messed it up because you put your hands in it. You put your hands in it. I we want to... Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, we want God to be the God of our design instead of his own. That's so we, we design our own destinies. We design our own plans. We develop and build our own dreams. And then we're just like, here, God, bless it. Here, God, anoint it. Here, God. And then when we constantly face failure, 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 then we turn around and turn and get angry at God. And then we don't want to do any. We don't want to have anything to do with him because he didn't bless our Ishmael. And he's not obligated to. Not at all. Oh, I think a, a lot of us fall out of love and fall out with God and the Lord's church because God didn't do what he would never obligate himself to do. God wants to, God does the things that are in his will for us. And sometimes we get so used to being outside of the will of God and we so get so used to living on grace that we think that the grace that we're living on is actually God's will and perfect plan and work. And it's not. Not at all. Not at all. Not at, Not at all. all. <laughs> I didn't start experiencing blessings, wealth, and favor until I said yes to my dream. Wow. Say that again, man. Say that again. Say that again. I did not experience wealth, influence, uh, uh, prosperity, and, and, and abundance until I said yes to my dream. When I stopped feeling like my dream was too big, and I picked it up and I bared it like Jesus bore the cross and just said, you know what, God, you've given this to me. I'm going to just start walking with it and we'll see what happens. God literally started sending things out of the blue. Like I, I wrote a book on leadership that's only 50 pages long and churches from across the country are calling me, buying my book in bulk. They're caught. My itinerary is filling up to come and teach on something. That God gave me. I'm literally making money off of revelation from God because I said yes to my dream. I'm literally making money off of a deliverance manual that God gave me just because I said yes to my dream and stop fantasizing about every other person's book and every other person's idea. You know, Man, got to say yes to that dream. That's profound, man. That's profound. Tell us a little, a little bit more about your book that you mentioned, because it's amazing how, um, especially in this day and age, a lot of us are called by God to do things and to work on different things. And sometimes we'll think that that's only it. Like, towards, if I'm not mistaken, you have a full-time job and you've written two books and you serve and you lead ministry at your church. And also you're doing this thing that God has called you to do. Like, you're doing all of that. And guess what? Is all of that a part of your dream? Yeah. You know, really... I'm strengthened because I was working a full-time job and going to school full-time and I was dog tired. You know, now I'm working a full-time job. I'm the pastor of ministries for a thousand member church overseeing many ministries. You know, I'm traveling itinerantly. I'm, I'm writing books because I said yes to my dream. Strength has come to my life and I'm able to do all of this stuff without batting the eye, ready to take on whatever else is coming because God spoke a word and I said yes to it. The Bible says that God, in Isaiah, that God, no word that comes out of the mouth of God will return into him void. The dream that you have on the inside of you was spoken by God himself. And that meaning that it won't return into him void, it literally means that that dream already has the strength to fulfill itself. You just have to say yes to it to tap into that strength. Yes to it. You just have to say yes to it to tap into the supernatural strength and anointing to do everything you have to do. Like my book, my books are are were written while working a full-time job. Not a regular full-time job, like a high volume full-time job. And, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that, man, because sometimes I think that we are looking for God to do something like to take us off our job so that we can focus on this particular assignment. When God has actually given us enough hours in a day, he's given us enough hours under the sun to do it, to work and work hard and produce where, um, where he's planted us as well as to produce on the things that he's called for us to do. 
outside of that particular nine to five, man, we have to get to a point where our production is non-negotiable. We have, we have no, we have wavered yeah. negotiated with God about what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, how we don't have the time, when we're going to find the time and all these different things like that. And when we start to remember, we recall and really come into agreement with the fact that if we don't produce, we don't profit. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. If you don't produce, you don't profit. I think the Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. And then my dad used to say, go get a right. job, bro. <laughs> but it's like, we have to get to a Go get a job, yeah. Go get a job. But we have to really get to a, a place in our mindset where you say, you know what? My production is non-negotiable. We have so many things in life that we have made and allowed to become negotiable that we really think that we have a say-so in everything. We think we have a say-so in this thing and that thing. We also think we have a say-so as to when we're going to produce what God has told us to produce as if the things that God does to told us to do is not time sensitive. sensitive. Yes. Time sensitive. There are windows that are open for many of us, or there are windows that have just recently closed for many of us, or there are windows that closed a little while ago and we didn't even realize they closed. And there are also windows that are about to open up for many of us because we are coming into the knowledge of the fact that the things that God has placed in front of me is time sensitive. You've got to create time to write the book. You've got to create time to write the manual. You've got to create time to write the song. You've got to create time to develop the business plan. You've got to create time to work on the nonprofit. You've got to create time because guess what? Time is going to always fly. You're always going to get busy. You're always going to get pulled this way, that way, this way, and that way. But you've got to create the time. God's a creator. That man spoke and there was. He yeah. is God of all creation. And I believe that we can tap into the creation power of God if we just create the time for God to move in it. And it doesn't take God long. I heard That's you so that. big. Go ahead, man. I heard you mention that. Like, uh, you wrote the first book. It was 50 pages and churches now all over the place are binding and bringing you in to do it. How long did it take you to write that book? It took me altogether about a month and a half to write a book. A month and a half. And you are literally sitting. Because I buckled down and said yes. You are saying the fruit of life now. After all you did was just kind of sit there and I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do what I've got to do. Listen, still, still, I, I, and that book, that dream has built, was just the foundation of another dream, you know, and they just, they're going to keep building on top of each other. And it's going to be, you know. One dream is the foundation for the next dream. And that dream yes. is the foundation for the next dream. It's like the Bible says, we go from glory to glory. We go from dream to dream to dream. And I can tell you this, man. Yes. You start to accomplish those dreams those first few times. Those things are, that builds your, that builds your resume. Almost like working out builds your strength and builds your endurance. That builds your saying, you know what? God is faithful. He was faithful when I launched out and did this. He was faithful when I launched out and did that. Surely he's going to be faithful when I start to do this. When it gets bigger and bigger. Surely. Surely, surely, when it goes from me just kind of starting this and starting that, next thing I know, I got a, an arena full of people coming to learn and get information and impartation on how to run a business. But it all started with doing this right here, helping this person right there, helping this person right there, doing this in the midst of me helping other people do theirs. Man, man think about it. Tori, let's talk about this, man. How many people have put their dreams down to solely work on the dreams of others? As if when you get to heaven, when you pull it, when he pull out your check sheet, as if you can substitute what he have on your check sheet with that with that person's dream. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people who's gonna be feelings gonna be real deal hurt because they worked on the dreams of their friends and their brothers and their sisters and their family members, and they never worked on their own. How do you tell when you you know just let's just Taurus help me help me walk through this. So as Taurus, if, you, if you're God and you say, Evan, okay, well, I'm glad to have you up here. Uh, let's go through your little checklist before I let you in the club up here. <laughs> the heavenly club. Yeah, right. You start going through my stuff and you say, well, you didn't do this. And this was the thing that I kind of purposed and designed you to do. Do we still get in? Disobedience is a sin. No way around it. So you mean to tell me that Working on the vision of the, the church that God's assigned me to and my pastor and my first lady and working on different special projects at work and helping my sister launch her, open up her salon and helping my brother open up his shoe cleaning business. All these things matter. But if 
I don't do what God told me to do is disobedience and sin's not going to get me in, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we look for affirmation from everybody but God. <laughs> and so that's why that's why we start that's why we start helping everybody else's vision because we work out of a slave mentality out of an orphan heart that says if i work for you you'll love me instead wow. of saying that to god who loves us unconditionally if i work for you god and i do what you if you love me whether i do it anyway but i i will not allow the vision and the dream that God put on the inside of me to die because I'm seeking affirmation from a man, a woman, a sister, or a brother on this earth. Not going to happen. Can't happen. Now, that's what we've got to make a non-negotiable right there. Yeah. That's that's the thing, man. That's the thing. And I think really, realistically, we spend more time in other people's visions and dreams because we're hiding to not have to do our own. Oh yeah, it's easier to just work somebody. But, but bro, I can. I'm so guilty of that. I I have been guilty of that. Not anymore. Oh, me too, man. Let me. I can be the first one to testify this, testify about this. I have built the dreams and visions of others because I just knew that. Let me not even say I knew. I know. I knew that those dreams and those and those uh, visions and those things coming to pass, they have responsibilities. They had standards. They had requirements that I just was not interested in in living up to at that moment. So you know yeah. what? I'm gonna do everybody else's thing because I can do everybody else's thing and do exactly what I want to do because you know what? My name's not on the front of it. Yeah, that's so. It's so much easier. It's so much easier to work somebody else's field to and and not be responsible. And that's another reason. Because the dream is big, but the responsibility that comes along with it is just as big. And so we'll put that down because we don't want we, we, we want the we want the rewards of the dream without the process of responsibility. We want the rewards of the dream, but not the process and the responsibility. We put our yeah. dreams down because we don't want the rewards of them. We want the rewards of them, but we don't want the process and the responsibility. And that explains why we don't have a lot of things that we declare and decree on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday nights. It's because we are not doing You can't it. declare and decree on top of in, you can't decre declare and decree on top of on top of disobedience. I don't care how much you're calling finances in. If you are walking in disobedience and walking out of the assignment and the dream that God put on the inside of you, you won't see the fullness of it. It can't happen. God's not a man and he should lie. What a man sows is what he reaps. You sow disobedience, you will reap disobedience. Man, that's the truth. Whew. That's the tough truth. Well, that'll help a lot of you guys. Um, when you get to church on Sunday, you don't really have to put any more money on the pastor's um, word up there. You just need to start being more, dis more obedient to God. <laughs> do what he told you to do. I gotta save a lot of you guys twenty dollars on Sunday. Just remember that if I can just be obedient to what God's told me to do, I might keep this seed and God to be faithful to His promises without me sowing this twenty dollars on that one. Yeah, yeah. You 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 can't sow you can't sow into disobedience. So you can't sow yourself out of disobedience. You just have to do what you're called to do. You can't sow yourself out of disobedience. You got to do your way out of disobedience. You got to do it, man. <laughs> you have got to do your way out of disobedience. Taurus, man, that's heavy. Taurus, I want to say thank you, man, for just jumping on here with me. God, man, I'm so godly proud of what you're what you're doing, what you've done. If you guys have not had a chance, go to www.taurussolomon.com. Get the Pillars Leadership Book. It's not just about church leadership. It'll help you, Kingdom Citizen, on your job and also for the people that you lead. And secondly, you we all need a measure of deliverance. So Taurus has released a deliverance manual that you can do some self-deliverance on at home, on yourself, so the pastors don't have to do it to you when you get to church. But really, just <laughs> learn on the different things that are going on because this world is uh, not just what you see. There are a lot of things that are working behind the scenes, not just God. God is not the only one with the behind the scenes back, uh, backstage pass. Um, some of the things that are going on, you have the power to defeat by calling on the name of Jesus and doing what the Holy Scriptures say. So I promise you guys, please, please, please go to Torres' page, go to Torres' Facebook, go to Torres' website, his Instagram, follow him. He gives a lot of the great nuggets throughout the week as well as get this information so that you can move forward into being the best you 
and the best you will always be a free you. I promise you this, the freer you are, the better you can become. The better you'll live, the better you'll drive, the better you'll work, the better you'll do. It all starts with you getting the measure of freedom, the measure of freedom that you have been so desperately waiting on. You've been praying for it. You've been fasting for it. And this book has the key, the key components. This book probably going to free you. So go get both of them right now. Go to TorresSolomon.com. Let's support him for being the man of wisdom and the man of blessings that he is. And Torres, thank you, my brother, for jumping on here with me. Man, when I saw his book this morning, I thought about Thank it. you for having me, bro. Anytime I thought I saw it earlier today and I was like, I've got to have Taurus on here because many of us have put our dreams down and had to pick them back up to get this thing going and working. So Taurus, man, thank you so much for being a part of this, uh, this, this Zoom or this live, whatever you want to call it with me. I appreciate you. And also for you guys who um who are now who are still on here, I thank you guys for jumping on in. I pray this is shared, this is blessed you. Share it with somebody that you know needs the encouragement and the reminder to pick their dreams back up because they've got a lot of work to do. There are a lot of people waiting on them. There's a lot of money waiting on them, and they need to be in position with the right product, with the right service to get what God has for them. So tag them in and send it to them as a message. Um, if you guys are your first time on here, I welcome you. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Go to my website, Brown. I have something amazing starting on Thursday, the King's Business Conference, and God has laid it on my heart to start to bless some people with registrations. But I know some of you guys are, have... God has blessed you enough to be able to register. So go to my website and register right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. And do yourself a favor and make this investment in your own future because I promise you this, the people that are gonna be speaking to us and imparting in us, they are doing this already. They're living out their dreams. They're waking up every day, being successful, being thing, being people that God is pleasing. God has, has his hands on. So we have sessions on channeling creativity, a wealthy mindset, how to brand your business, how to market yourself to be global, how to look the part. Because I promise you this, saints of God, a great product is awesome. Great presentation is needed. But you need to look like the God you serve. I'm not going to buy nothing from you if you don't look like you use it, nor if you're looking, benefiting from it. So just little things like that, uh, how to build your business from the behind the scenes. Also, for those of you guys to the call to be in the nonprofit sector, we have to know what we're doing when we get there because there's free money out there. There's free money for your visions. But you've got to know what to do and how to get to that point for you to be able to receive what the the government is just giving away. And I think this is the perfect time for us to really be educated and equipped on all those things. So if you guys are interested, I know you all are interested. And if you're not interested, register your friend that's lazy, that ain't doing business well, or that needs to go ahead and start their business. This will help catapult them closer into destiny, closer into making money and closer to having a life that they are happy with each and every day. So again, I thank you guys for joining on with me today. I'll be back here again tomorrow, leading up to the conference. And then once we get the conference rolling, we're going to hit it and hit it hard. And we're going to be blessed so i thank you guys for jumping on in with me i love you all i appreciate you all and again go to my website www.ianevanbrown and get all the amazing things that are up there it's ebooks up there it's workbooks up there it's going to be some classes up there it's going to be some courses up there a pretty soon as well so i just thank you guys for following on and to staying on this whole time and i pray you guys have an amazing night but i pray today if nothing else you will no longer put down your dream and if your dream's already down pick it back up and get to work. And I love you guys. Have a great night.